Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. And tonight I thought we'd walk through uh, how I kind of approach color toning for each image. So uh, I am uh, kind of a fine art person in that each image kind of has its own voice and I want to explore the colors that work best with that image. Now there are certain situations when I have a brand uh, where I want a consistent tone and look for those. Uh, for example, my boudoir work has a little bit different tone than my fine artwork, which can be anywhere, really. Uh, also, if you have long-term customers that like a certain look, or you have a brand and you're trying to establish yourself with a certain look, um, you can start with a preset. However, I'll tell you that a lot of times you want to kind of let yourself evolve. Don't get stuck on one specific action or preset because someone down the street can have the exact same one. So learn to kind of explore these yourself, and I'll walk you through how to do that today. Uh, so you can save them inside of Capture One. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I look at the exposure of this image, and I want to talk a brief bit about exposure. I'm going to talk about this in pretty much every video I do because I feel like nobody seems to really kind of hit home with it. Uh, this is the histogram from this image, and uh, if you notice, we're pretty close to the right hand edge here. But if you notice, I had the exposure down by about a half a stop. This is how the image was exposed. And now if you saw this on the back of your camera, uh, you'd probably be like, oh my god, i got to turn that down. That's, that's too bright. Uh, realistically, according to Capture One here and the exposure evaluation tool, I nailed the exposure. So what that means is that I've filled the gas tank, and that's the histogram here, all the way to the right-hand side. And this first quadrant here is half of your image data. So make sure that you use all of this space and push it as far as you can without touching the edge. Uh, this you get a half here, a quarter here, an eighth here, and a sixteenth here. So that's why if you think to yourself, I'll just brighten that later, you really can't because you can't add data. And you'll find that if you would have dropped this down, say ex underexposed it by a stop, this here would have been pushed off the graph, which means it's a lot of noise if you try and brighten it later. So rather than thinking that you need a new camera because your current one is noisy, just try and fill the histogram when you shoot images, knowing later you can always come back and adjust the exposure as long as you don't clip the edge. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to bring it down by about half a stop. Uh, I'm judging this based on if I hover over uh, her forehead here and look at my histogram, you can see where the orange line is. So I'm looking right here. That orange line is uh, one stop over 18% gray. And uh, that is pretty much the standard for Caucasian skin. And you can check this, by the way, that if you use your graph and you flatten the curve here, that's 18% gray. So it exists. <laughs> so what we do is we want our Caucasian skin to be about one stop over this line in the middle. So we're looking for it to be right here. And you see that about half a stop down nails it. So again, I'm making an artistic decision here on how bright I want the final image to be. But you'll see that I don't tend to ever go this way with it because that's adding data we didn't collect. So work has to be done, guesses have to be made, noise has to be added, and it just becomes unfortunate. So I'm going to push this down by about a half, and I'm going to check it by checking the bright spot on her skin here. And if I wanted to get a more even exposure, I could even add a gradient here and try and cover the rest of her body, but that's uh, here nor there. So I'm just going to drop this down by about half-ish and call it good. Okay, so let's move on to color, which is the whole subject here, now that I'm done with my histogram rant. Uh, so I want to do is I want to start, and you notice I've, I've kind of built my tool selections up over time as to what I feel kind of where I want to go. I start here uh, where I select the shoot I'm working on. Um, I skip over the camera part unless I'm shooting tethered. If there's any lens correction, pre-sharpening, things along that lines, I'll do that in here. And then I'll go on to exposure correction. And then I will go directly into Photoshop. So from here, I will go into Photoshop. I will not do my color corrections first. And the main reason is that if it comes back and the client doesn't like it because it's too cold or too warm or, or something along that lines, you don't have to go back and redo all your skin editing or try and monkey with color to try and correct an issue. Or if you just do your color last, you don't ever have to worry about it the skin will always have to be retouched. So I just retouch the skin and then start the process of colorizing and adding artistic flair to the image. And we're gonna do that, uh, after I show you how I do this, we're gonna start with a, with a completed image where I would normally have it completed and then colorize that. So we're gonna do two images here. So uh, exposure here will be about half under, and then I will go to my color 
tab here, and this is where I do that work. And again, the layers palettes on pretty much every every screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. I'm going to click and hold. I'm going to add a new filled layer, and this is going to be my color layer. And I typically typically do this on its own uh, layer, and the mask fills the entire screen. <laughs> if we hit M on our keyboard, excuse me, you can see we have the entire screen filled with the mask. Hit M again. Now I'm going to go down, and I'm going to play with the color balance. This is, it's a really simple process. I just start with the shadows, I grab the middle, and I need to kind of start yoinking it around. And I just move it wildly until I find that I tend to like a certain area, and then I just start moving it less and less until I kind of say, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's like somewhere in there. Now, if I want to make this stronger or weaker, that's what this effect is for. This is, you know, turns it up to 11, and this brings it back down. And then this is the brightness of that effect. So I tend not to play with this side at all. I want to just play with the color right now. And then I go to midtones and I do the exact same process. And I just start playing with it. Now I'm looking for a skin tone here. That's really the secret to the midtone slider is where's your skin tone? And it's kind of hard to tell when we make small effects. So I'm going to move it way out here and just find it. So she's a bit green here. She's a bit red here. So it's like right in here. And then I'll go and reduce the effect using this tab here, because if I try and do it by hand, I'll end up wiggling it around. I just know her skin tone right there is decent because I took it to its extreme and it looked the right color. Uh, it was too Oompa Loompa-ish, obviously, but it was the right color. So then I'll bring it down, and there probably doesn't need to be a lot in this area. Now, highlights is one of those that I tend not to use, and uh, again, it's to each their own. I, I don't think this adds a believable cast to an image. Um, you can use it for correcting a cast, uh, but in general, I don't tend to use the highlight much, um, if ever. Uh, so I will just put that back now, and double-clicking to reset the tool. And then finally, after this is all done and I like what I have, and I'm not quite liking what I have, so I'm just going to play with it a bit more. So by the way, it's a great idea to walk away from your computer and come back and see that you like what you have later. Uh, see, I'm changing pretty dramatically here. Now one thing you can do, too, is... Uh, the shadow is on this side of the color wheel. And it means our mid-tone is probably going to be opposite. So if we go to mid-tone, we see it's not quite opposite. We should nudge it a little bit or nudge the shadow a little bit. Uh, this is kind of a, a checksum to make sure that we're sane. Not to say that it's wrong if you choose not to, but complementary colors tend to work. And we know that skin tone really isn't optional. So if we start with the skin tone, we know where we should end with the shadows. Uh, but I tend to start in the shadows anyway because I think the shadows add a lot more powerful comment to the image. And again, I tend not to use midtone anyway. So the shadow is really the part of this that I care most about. So I'd find the shadow that I like. And then I go to the last step, which is the master. I like the master because it affects the entire image, but not in a very overly dramatic way. It's subtle. So I'll just start and give it a quick nudge. And again, I'm trying to find a color that works for it, but I don't want to go far. If you go too far... You can see it gets kind of weird, but that weirdness can help you find where you need and then dial it down. It's like right in there. And our shadow is, it's, it's over here. And I could say that's okay. I mean, that's, this works for me, even though it's not directly across, but that directly across is a great place to start. Uh, so, so that's how I find my color balance. And again, it's on a separate layer. So if I want to, I can drop its opacity. If it's too strong in an effect, I can turn it on and off with the checkbox here. Uh, I've got everything I need to control the, that entire image. Now, I can go in here, too, and I can mix these. I can add some, some contrast, for example. But I don't tend to want to do that on my color layer. I just feel like I'm contaminating the thing. So I just go and create a new filled layer. Let's just click and hold, new filled layer. And uh, I'm going to call this exposure. And then I can play with this exposure area in here. So I could play with the contrast, for example. Um, I did drop the exposure in here, but I have to stop. We should probably actually do that again here just to be consistent. Um, whoop, the brightness, um, I'll have to have a separate video on what brightness and exposure do. Uh, they're, they seem like they do the same thing, but they're really quite different. And then uh, saturation of an image, which I tend not to play with. If anything, I play with it in the negative direction, like if it's just too much. Um, but I tend to just leave it where it is because this is where I'm kind of affecting that. If I have somebody with an overly tan skin or something along that lines, then I'll get into some of the more advanced color features inside a captured one or just correct it in Photoshop if it's too egregious. But Linaria has wonderful skin here, so this is a very easy, easy subject, which is probably why I picked her for this video. 
Now again, uh, even with exposure, I can drop the effect if it's too much. Um, but again, I'm picking these values based on what I like, not expecting to change it later. Okay, so let's go and do one more. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my output here. And I'm gonna start with an image I've completed of her. Uh, so this image is completely retouched. Uh, there's my preview catch up. Uh, and now I can do is I can right click and say new variant. So a new variant won't have the effects the old variant had. And you can see there's quite a bit of work that's been done here or seemingly has been done here to get the image to its final more polished position. But these are both the same TIFF, meaning all the work that's the difference between these two images was done inside of Capture One. Uh, there's no reason to go into Photoshop to do a lot of this highlight work uh, when we can do it inside of Capture One later. Because if the client doesn't like it, again, you can come back and change it later pretty easily. So let's do the process on this entire image. So I'm gonna start with shadows. I'm gonna create a new layer and uh, just a whole layer here and appropriate color. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the shadows and just start yoinking it around until I find what I like. And again, if you're working on a set of images, you may already have one that you like and uh, you will just save that uh, and use it again. The way you do that, by the way, is you go here and you use this copy adjustments from the primary variant and then you just click on the one you want to attach to and just copy it down. Uh, so now these variants will look exactly the same. Uh, but we don't want to do that. Um, we want to do this the hard way. <laughs> So, and you never know, I might end up with a different result. Um, however, they should be somewhat similar. Actually, I just wanna change the light image up a little bit. Okay, so color, shadow, and I'm just gonna look at just the colors I'm looking for, just in the shadows, and just wanna go smaller and smaller circles until I find what I'm looking for. Then I can play with the power of this and see what looks nice. I tend to like colder shadows, it's just, what I, my preference is, so a lot of my images tend to look the same way, which means I have a style, even though it's not intentional, uh, I just like a certain way. Okay, I'm gonna skip mid-tone. Uh, again, normally I would probably not use mid-tone, so I'm not gonna use mid-tone here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the master up and see where that is. And if, again, I'm trying to pick the, pick the skin tone, so it looks like skin tone's right about in there, and then drop the master back down. Now master does affect the brightness a bit, so you may need to adjust it a bit um, this way, or you can adjust it this way, depending on what you want to do. Um, I almost went into why those are different, but I won't do that today. It's too complicated for uh, for one video. So I kind of come up with a subtle difference here. Uh, I know what I like. Now, the other thing I like is the hair. Uh, so for hair, I would just create a new layer, call it hair. By the way, I'm labeling the layers for you. I would never do this in real life because who's got time for that? hit B for brush, and then I would just go in and create a rough mask around her hair. Then you can leave a hole in the middle, just like I did. I didn't bother to, to color in all of her hair, just the outer part, making sure not to go on her skin and not to go like on the blanket here, or the poor Cotty is going on there. That's a technical word for it. And then you can do is you can go up here and say fill mask, and it will fill in all the holes for you. Hit M on your keyboard to turn it off. Go down to clarity, which is what I like on hair. I like punch, and then just add some punch. Just a bit. We don't wanna make it, you know, stupid, but um, hey, even stupid doesn't look too bad. Uh, we go with subtle. I like punch, and I like classic, actually. Uh, these two tend to be my go-tos. Although class classic's a bit crispy. Uh, so let's just go with punch and bring it in. If you, you wanna do a before and after, you can alt and click on this, and it'll do a before and after. You gotta hold down the click when you do it until you like what you like. And there we go. So let's see how different these are. This one versus this one. Okay, so this one is not as warm. This one's warmer. I actually kind of like it better. So say that I'm working on a series now and I want to keep this preset because I have other images of her that I want to apply it to. Uh, you can go into here, into the pre apply out menu, and you can go down here and say, save user preset. Now you can see I have three here that I've kind of added. Uh, and it's adding them, by the way, only to that layer that's highlighted. So we don't want to do that. And we wanna go to the color layer to do that. So color layer, and then we have complement A, complement B, and complement C. These are ones that I've used in the past and they look pretty crummy on this image. So uh, obviously they aren't gonna work here and I'm not gonna force it to work just because it's my style or my, pr my chosen action. Uh, I like this image as it is now. So I could go ahead and save this as a preset if I would like and use it. Now, if this is part of the same set and you wanna copy these settings up 
you would use this button here and then you don't have to create a style to copy them throughout. However, note that if you leave this folder and go to another folder to play with one of these images, uh, you cannot copy those settings down that will have been cleared from the last variant. So you have to do them inside of the same folder from what I found. Uh, but that's okay uh, because again, we're gonna be doing all of our retouching first before we apply color because we can always go back and undo it. Just like we showed a minute ago, I can create a new variant and now it comes back to right where we were. So I could offer the client three different options for the way this has been color colored. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'll, I'm a big fan of Capture One here and uh, over Lightroom, there's so many things we can do in here with layers and the color control is so much more advanced. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. And um, I'm trying to do much more regular videos. So if you have something inside of Capture One you'd like to see a video on, uh, just let me know and I'll see if I can knock one out for you. See you next time.